It's 10 o'clock Mountain Time, and uh, Tom and Shane on the air. Tom, uh, Shane's having a little problem getting <laughs> getting in with us, but that's okay. We'll be chatting with him here shortly. Today, we want to talk about how to fire problem customers. How to fire problem customers. And uh, <laughs> if Shane were here, he would probably tell you that uh, the uh, problem customers, uh, the epicenter of that is probably restaurants. Uh, the food is no good. Uh, it's cold. Uh, it's too dark. It's too loud. The service is lousy, whatever. But uh, uh, apparently uh, <laughs> there are, there's about 3% of the population, I believe, that uh, simply uh, are not happy unless they're unhappy. <laughs> so maybe that's the way the way the world works. Uh, but uh, at any rate, so uh, but anyway, we want to get uh, rocking and rolling here. So uh, the first question we have to answer, of course, is uh, what exactly is a problem customer? What is exactly uh, a problem customer? And uh, I think we've all heard the thing, the, uh, the customer is always right. Well, there are times when the customer is not always right. And um, we're not talking about a customer who might have a one-time complaint or a one-time service issue or something like that. But what we're talking about, uh, for me, a problem customer does two things uh, that disrupt your business. First, their demands uh, disrupt the normal flow of business. Uh, for you and your employees, and two, their demands usually produce a lower profit per uh, job or uh, purchase uh, than their business is worth. And often they justify it by based on what they spend. And uh, therein being the uh, being the problem issue. And um, so, what can I tell you? Um, you know, when uh, when someone's unhappy, we try our best to accommodate them. But uh, there are certain customers, uh, for whatever reason, that just it's it's really hard to satisfy that particular person. So that's where we find ourselves. And uh, looking at uh, looking at uh, customers in general, uh, most of them are fine, but you're always going to have that one person. Now, another question is, who decides when a customer falls into the problem uh, customer category? Well, more than likely, that is probably going to be your employees. Uh, they're the person that deals with the uh, uh, customer probably more so than the owner. And also, in many cases, the customer feels that they can uh, be rude or beat up on the employees uh, more so than... Uh, more so than they can um, the the owner, and that again becomes a situation where uh, you don't want your employees abused by anyone, and they are going to normally be the first ones to come in and tell you that there's an issue with this customer. So that's uh, that's kind of where it starts, and uh, after that, we have to uh, determine the problem. And then we have to try and solve that problem. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we do is we talk to the customer and see what the issue is. Perhaps uh, we, may have, uh, we may have gone above and beyond. And at one point, um, you know, at one point we, uh, we determined that, uh, uh, you know, it was a misunderstanding or something like that. And Shane joins us. Thanks for being here, Shane. Well, thank you. Glad to my facial lamp. <laughs> I had to restart my computer. It's yeah, like me. Well, see, that's why you get here about ten minutes early. <laughs> I did, but I had... uh, didn't work, huh? All right. Well, we're talking about uh, problem customer Shane, as as you know, that's our topic for today, and um, in many cases, the problem customer it may just be a um, problem of misunderstanding. You know, that perhaps there's poor communication uh, on what the customer expects and what we uh, we are prepared to deliver. And we may have gone above and beyond for them on some point, And now they feel that's that's our normal service. And we need to explain that uh, we can't always do that. Right, Shane? That's correct. And, and I guess the most important thing is that this is different than a 
brick and mortar store or a customer you have online with a product you're selling. This is more uh, really that you deal with in the trades, you know, whether you're an, an, an electrician, a plumber, a tradesman of some kind, a, a, a home fixer upper uh, that helps people that are in their older years and so forth. And, you know, you may do several things and be called more often to do something for them. So, you know, handling this problem is different in both situations. And we thought that we would, you know, go through this because it, it is something that may is an important aspect of your business because an established clientele is what makes life a lot easier for you. You spend less money having to market you know, your, your business and you have to, you know, you, you, uh, you can maintain and, uh, and accelerate growth easier because you have a, base that you know you can depend on for added expense if you do want to expand with advertising so there's so many things that are important about discussing this problem we had to make a show out of it yeah yeah <laughs> that's for sure well uh earlier before you got online i talked about the uh restaurant business which you know a lot about is probably the epicenter of customer complaints food's cold food's bad it's too dark it's too loud uh, bad service. You know, I mean, uh, the list is endless for, for a restaurant. It's very difficult uh, because it's so personal food. You know, when you eat, it's one of those personal things you do. You go to the bathroom, personal, you eat, that's, and you sleep, that's personal. And so people take it in a very different way than they do. If it's, you know, an outlet need, need to be replaced because it, you know, it keeps blowing the, the circuit or, a drain, you know, drain pipe that's plugged or, you know, you don't have the earrings that I really was looking for and it's your fault. You know, the, these are sort of separate things, but they're the same. They are the same. Absolutely right. Well, uh, um, yeah, once we've uh, determined that we have a problem customer and uh, there isn't a whole lot we can do about it, uh, the next question we have to deal with is, how do we fire a customer? How, how do we get rid of this person? And uh, there's a couple ways uh, that we um, we want to talk about. One is called the parking meter method. And uh, this method simply means as long as you feed the meter, you can park here. If you want a package delivered overnight, it usually costs more. It's the same with customer problems. If they demand, if their demands require additional resources or create problems, then they should expect a surcharge of some kind. Wouldn't you say, Shane? I agreed. And you know, everybody has this idea that uh, you can just uh, uh, be flippant about uh, customers. But remember, you know, one of the big aspects is is uh, in having and developing a clientele is being able to establish word of mouth recommendation so having someone out there speaking bad of you can do a lot more harm than someone speaking good of you it's, it's a sad reality but th but that's the way it is so networking is a big part of this and that's why tom brings this up in these examples because in large corporate america the parking meter method is the 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 thing um although in the case of even the you know the mega trend now like even uh, um amazon you know, if you call up and complain, oh, someone stole it or it hasn't shown up or they'll just send you another one. Or if you call up and say, oh, this there's a broken piece or I'm missing this piece. I want to return it. They'll just say, just throw it away and they'll send you another one. Yeah, they will. <laughs> and, and, and it's because the, their numbers are so significant that it's cheaper to just send another one right off the one that you just told them to throw away. <clears throat> you know, and uh, they get a write off. So they get a benefit from it, basically. It's like insurance. Sure. Yeah. Uh, the other way, of course, is uh, you can write them a Dear John letter, a formal letter outlining that you're sorry that you can no longer provide the service or uh, procedures that they require. And uh, when the customer or when the current uh, project is completed, you would prefer they obtain future services elsewhere. And it shouldn't be a shouldn't be an angry letter. It should just be a letter stating the facts that, um, you know, your demands are beyond our capability and, uh, you know, go somewhere else. Yeah, the, is, is uh, defer and, and misdirect. <laughs> yeah. I think it was a politician <laughs> in there somewhere. But anyway, the, the, yeah, defer and misdirect works too. You know, you you can you can tell your staff that you don't, we don't take, you know, uh, appointments beyond a month. 
so that you know you get your customers call and you say oh we're our month's booked already and then you know if you, they get towards the next month you know you can tell them well we've already booked up the time and that that's a one way of just suggesting we you know we're getting so busy and and we're getting bigger that we're getting bigger projects that aren't a day they're a week or they're four days you know so th there are positive ways of doing it and you can also refer them to someone else that's that's i think one of the greatest things to do is you're getting so busy with bigger projects mm -hmm. here here are a couple other plumbers or electricians whatever it might be you might call yeah i would certainly refer them to um uh a competitor yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> for sure I wasn't going to say that, but I'm glad you did. Yeah, yeah, always, yeah. Always refer them to your competitor yeah. to to uh, do that. That's the uh, smart way to do it. Because, well, if if you leave, they're out. Uh, you know, they're out a uh, a source for That's whatever right. whatever they need. So, uh, so yeah, I think it's a good uh, it's a good way. Uh, yeah, that uh, uh, when um, my uh, dad and mom ran our farm landscaping and floral business uh we got all the dead beats from the other places <laughs> we would send our dead beats to <laughs> somewhere else we just tell them no more credit no more no more this or that so uh, yeah uh, the other thing we need to mention is that uh, we are live on uh, Streamyard, and that is of course um, uh, what we used to uh, make our podcasts and i i don't know if you're aware of this uh, but uh YouTube is the only platform that pays you to make videos. <laughs> Instagram doesn't, uh, Facebook doesn't, Twitter doesn't, but Facebook will pay you to make videos. So you may want to uh, check it out in the description below. Once I process this uh, the description, uh, how to get there, they have a free version that you can certainly use. And uh, that is certainly good. The other thing, if you're watching us on YouTube, absolutely subscribe, hit the little notification bell. So you'll always be informed as to when we're going to be on again. We're on here every Tuesday and Thursday at this time, 10 a.m. Mountain Time. And we're also on Patreon. There's some uh, great advantages to you as a business owner uh, to uh, support uh, us and this channel. So we hope that you will um, take a look at that and uh, decide if that's worthy, uh, worth it to you. And uh, we hope you'll take advantage of that. And of course, don't forget our website, TomAndShane.com. TomAndShane.com. Uh, head over there and uh, check that out. So a uh, lot, uh, lot to do here. So, uh, well, uh, yeah, we've uh, we fired our customer, Shane. So I guess <laughs> the last word here, uh, uh, I, I guess the uh, what we should say is that uh, somewhere along the line, um, you know, the customer may have gotten the wrong impression or you gave them the wrong impression or or whatever. So um, you always try to resolve the uh, situation diplomatically, if possible. And then, um, you know, if that if that course of action doesn't work, then, you know, see you later. I guess That's right. I mean, basically it could comes down to a customer that has this attitude of entitlement. Oh, we're a regular. You, you know, we, you come here a lot and you do things for us a lot. And we should get a little, you, know, you should charge us less because we're a regular customer. Well, that that's just not the case. Yeah. So the response to that is, well, I appreciate you uh, as a customer, but what I'm charging you is, a, is a competitive price and uh, to do, to, to, to charge you less, uh, would make it it would not make it cost effective for me to do the work because I'm already I already have competition. So as we said, here's a list <laughs> of other yeah. people to call. The, the the other one is you know aside from the person that feels they're entitled, you know is is uh, people that are in sales themselves and uh, you know work for companies or work for companies about discounts or or you know paying less for something. And uh, that, too, is a, another problem. And then finally is a, is a customer that becomes a problem customer because they want to always pay you cash. So, you know, yeah. it's, less, it's less. Well, that, that becomes a trap. So you don't want to get there, you know, quite often. It, it could, you know, they could say that make it, they could suggest you pay, charge them less or they'll drop a dime on you, as they say. Yeah. So, you know, those are the <laughs> examples of the you know, three problem customers just to give you an idea of what the whole purpose of this conversation was about. 
but Tom has told you, you know, that you, if it becomes something that there's no impasse, you can't resolve, you're better to move on. There are other good people out there because there's only two types, givers and takers. Yep. Well, compromise is the goal, but it's uh, not always possible. Work with your clients uh, and your, or your customers as long as you can. But when it reaches that uh, breaking point, uh, as uh, Neil Sedaka said so many years ago, breaking up is hard to do. <laughs> but, <laughs> but sometimes you got to do it. So, <laughs> that's for yeah, sure. That's pretty good. Good use. I like yeah. that. Yeah, I thought that was, I thought that was a good analogy there. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, we're on uh, radio every Saturday, by the way. Uh, business and political show there every Saturday, 8 to 11 Mountain Time. Click listen now at kmmsam.com, and uh, we'll be happy to take your calls and texts over there. And also, of course, uh, if we missed any of our past shows or any of our past uh, videos or podcasts or whatever, uh, you can. Uh, they're all at kmmsam.com. Just click on Tom and Chain's podcast, and uh, you'll be taken there immediately. And also don't forget, of course, our website, tomandshane.com. And uh, we hope uh, you will frequent that as often as possible. There's a lot of articles and tips and things over there that uh, we uh, don't always cover over here. So uh, by all means, whoops, <laughs> didn't mean to put that up twice, but that's okay, I guess. <laughs> all right, uh, that's going to wrap it up for us. So, uh, hey, we appreciate you uh, tuning in, listening, and, um, well, if you have to fire a customer, whew. <laughs> well, You're fired. Yeah, at least you know how to do it. <laughs> All right. We'll see everybody Thursday with another video for small business.